All right, check, check, one, two. Can everyone hear me? All right, if you can hear my voice, go ahead and give me a wave real quick. If you can hear my voice, give me a wave. Good, good. All right, good. Welcome, Hill Country family. All right, we're going to go ahead and start transitioning into worship. If we can go ahead and start getting everyone coming up to the front, kind of get in a worship position, and just uh, actually even just to get started this morning, just, you know, a reminder, we're all family here. So why don't we actually start this morning and actually just give someone a hug to your right and left, and actually just, just give them a good, a good old welcome this morning. Someone get, give each other a hug. Yeah, and if you haven't been told yet, man, I just want to say I'm so happy you guys are here this morning. If you are here, you have truly made the effort to get through all the rain, especially and, and just with all the weather conditions. So we know that you want to be here if you're here this morning. And so, yeah, just give yourself a round of applause for that one. That's all, that's awesome. All right, so yeah, if we actually just going to go ahead and turn our just uh, conversations to a close and eyes to the front, and we'll go ahead. I, I see everyone back here. We'll go and get our conversations to a close now, coming up here to the front. Just, yeah, I just want to actually read uh, just scripture that just the Lord just put on my heart this morning. We actually have Psalms 103. All right, we're going to go ahead and turn conversations to a close real quick. Psalms 103, 1 through 7. Praise the Lord, O my soul, all my inmost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits, who forgives all our sins and heals all our diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and, cr uh, and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with all good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works his righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He makes his ways known to Moses and his deeds to all the people of Israel. And by the way, just so you know, you are his people. He makes all his ways known for, for, for his people, for, us, for, for those who love him. And so if you have just things that have just been, been on our heart, that have been heavy, just things that you just say feel like they, you need to give to the Lord this morning, I just want to tell you, the Lord wants to take those things. He doesn't want you to actually carry anything that actually keeps you from being able to actually listen and just be able to go uh, openly into, into his presence. So if that's you this morning, you need something, just go ahead and lift out your hands. Yeah, we just say thank you, Lord, for what you do, Father. We say just, uh, yeah, we come to you, Father God, open and just say with open arms this morning. We say, Lord, come and just take away anything that's just inhibiting us from hearing your voice. We just ask, Father God, just, uh, yeah, that you do only what you do, Father God, as we come together as family, as church family this morning, Lord, and just uh, to lift up your holy name. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Morning, you guys ready to worship? Alrighty, let's get to it. Let's do it. Breathe on me, oh 
breath of God. Flood me with your living water. Rush through me now till my soul overflows. sudden I feel him coming all of a sudden he's gonna come all of a sudden he's gonna come all of a sudden he's gonna come all of a sudden I feel him coming all of a sudden he's gonna come all of a sudden he's gonna come all of a sudden He's gonna come all of a sudden. I feel him coming all of a sudden. He's gonna come all of a sudden. He's gonna come all of a sudden. He's gonna come all of a sudden. I feel him coming all of a sudden. He's gonna come all of a sudden. He's gonna come all of a sudden. Come all of a sudden, he's gonna come all of a sudden, he's gonna come all of a sudden, I feel him coming, oh you might 
بذاره He's gonna come all of a sudden He's gonna come all of a sudden He's gonna come all of a sudden I feel him coming all of a sudden Do you believe it? He's gonna come all of a sudden He's gonna come all of a sudden He's gonna come all of a sudden I feel him coming all of a sudden
This morning during pre-service prayer, Chris was, was uh, feeling to pray against storms, and we prayed against some natural storms happening in the nation, we prayed for the tornadoes in the Midwest, some of the disruption that's been happening on campuses, and just confusion that's been happening in minds. Um, but when I, before we started worship, I, I started feeling that there might be storms in here internally that we need to pray against. And I wanted to just, uh, right now, just before we go into this next song, we're just going to play. And here's what I want you to do. If you have a storm, if you have a circumstance, if you have an emotion that's out of control, if you have something that you need to pray against and you need to win in the spirit, we're going to give an opportunity right now. We're just, we're going to play and we're not going to sing. We're not going to do anything. We're actually just going to give you time with the Holy Spirit here. So if you need that, just put out your hands and just start to pray. Just ask him, Holy Spirit, would you meet me right here? Meet me right in this place. prayers up there. For the moment when I'm still in your presence, all noise dies down. Lord, speak to me now. You have all my attention. I will linger and listen. I 
just want to remind you guys that Him coming all of a sudden, He's a miracle working God. That He is Jesus, He walked this earth, but He healed, and not just physically, but He like met people in pain and compassion and set them free. And so I just want to remind you that as you're bringing yourself to Him, as you're opening up your heart, as you're surrendering, that there's actually a place that He wants to meet you, not just in the natural, but in the supernatural. And so I would encourage you that as you're opening up, that as you're singing these words, He comes all of a sudden, to actually see Him coming all of a sudden into the circumstances that you need Him to come into. Don't just leave it as like, I'm here, Jesus, see Him doing it, allow Him to come in and do what I know He wants to do and what He is doing. So there is healing in the room if you need to be healed. There is freedom from things that you have been felt bound by, even if it's years. He can do it all of a sudden. There is provision if that is what you need. He was able to find, like say, go to the fish and find the gold coin in the fish. It is impossible things that He is able to do. So I just release that over you, that He will come all of a sudden into the circumstances that you were bringing before Him this morning. Hey, let's just respond to that. Ooh. Welcoming Him as King, as, as King of King and Lord of Lords is not just reserved for Palm Sunday, amen? Ooh. So I want you to just lift your hands up with me this morning. And I want you to just lift up a shout of King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Hosanna, Hosanna. If you want Him to come, we just say we make the place for you to show up this morning to heal hearts, to heal minds, to interject into situations and bring freedom, God. We just say Hosanna, 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 Hosanna. We recognize you as King, Jesus. We recognize you as King. Whoa. Ha. God, if you're looking for a place where you're 100% welcome, we say, here, Lord, here, Lord, in my life, in my heart, you are welcome, oh God.
hearts with just the voices. The Lord was telling me while we were singing that, he said, am I really your one thing? Will you drop everything, the worry over your kids, the stress about making enough money or making more than enough so you can save for this and that and this and that. Will you not stress over your husband's work, over your kid's future, over your son falling out of that window, all these things. He's like, will you not worry? Let me be your one thing. Let me be your one thing. I love getting to share the offering. Last Sunday, the Lord reminded me of a testimony. Do y'all like testimonies? He reminded me about my testimony, something that I got to encounter that I forgot about. But about this time last year, maybe more like it last March, um, I got, you know, repassionate about my job. And that itself was a, a testimony. But... I was starting to get fired up and I was like, you know what, Lord, I, I, I really want to do a better job about tithing to you. I had not been tithing my income because it was very small, but it didn't matter. I should have been tithing. So I started tracking a lot better what, what I need to tithe outside of what my husband makes. It's like, what do, I, what do I make? What do I tithe? So I started tithing that. And I started getting up to date on my tithe because I was like, Lord, I owe you. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to find out what I owe you. So I went back and I started getting more up to date. And about December this past year, I was officially in line. So now I'm more, I'm, I'm month to month, I'm more on it. And I looked back and I saw my income increase every single month as I was tithing. Yeah, that's awesome, guys. That was awesome. And I was like, Lord, you're so good. You are so good and you're so funny that you reminded me of your goodness. And I was just being faithful and doing what I felt he called me to do. But I wanted to share this. Acts 20, 35 says, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Can I be bold to rephrase that for you? Blessed are those who give more than receive. It's not a bad thing to receive. I have been blessed by people who have given to me. But blessed are you that give out of your heart, out of your love of others, out of the love of God, out of fear of the Lord. Fear of the Lord comes wisdom. So I just encourage you. It's, we're tithing today. I'm about to press the, the give on my app. So I just encourage you. I'm gonna pray over us, but I just encourage you. Give what's on your heart. Listen to Holy Spirit. Let him be the leading. Not, don't let us make you feel guilty or anything. We want Holy Spirit to, to direct you and guide you in that. So Lord, I just pray over our money. I pray over our time, over our resources, over our giftings, over our callings, over our thoughts. Lord, everything that is us, that you have created, that, it, that you be our one thing, that we just give of ourselves freely, whatever you've called that to be. Thank you, Lord, for today. We just bless the, the money that you do bring in. We thank you, Lord, that it would be blessed and that it would be multiplied and that it could pour out into the, the people here and the people around us. In Jesus' name, amen. There's gonna be boxes in the back and a video on how to give online.
are called to be like our Father, who overflows in generosity. He's invited us to be cheerful givers, so we can live in His blessings and abound in all things. Let's partner with heaven today and joyfully give our tithes and offerings. Here's a quick link to visit the giving page on our website, providing you with multiple ways to give. There are also offering boxes with envelopes to drop your cash and checks in the back of the sanctuary. May you be blessed as you give, believing that God is faithful to supply all your needs. Buenos dias, everybody. Good morning. There's the lights. You can see us now. Hello. How's everyone doing? Good. Well, you guys are already quiet. I don't need a shush or do anything. No need for a dad joke. No need for a shushing. You guys are ready for announcements. Everyone, but we have a little bit of time. Did everyone make it here all right? I mean, you guys made it here, so <laughs> I see the rest of the chairs. I'm like, hmm, I don't think it rained that much. <laughs> you know, maybe give, maybe give the person you usually sit next to a little text, be like, you guys okay? <laughs> I'm messing with you. It's a joke. It's a joke. Let's jump into announcements here. Uh, well, first off, if you haven't done it, wow, this is, this is loud today. Um, if you haven't done it already, I don't see any kids, so you probably did a great job, zero to sixth grade, out in the Narnia doors. Awesome yes. job, though. Y'all are pro level. Yeah, thank you. In the back, I saw your thumbs up. Good is that job, Cade? Cade? Okay, Good your job. hat is covering your face. Anyways, so this is, I realized this morning, ladies, where are you at? Who, ha who has a ticket to the ladies' tea? Okay, you don't have one. Okay, raise your hand if you do not have a ticket and would like one. Yes. Okay, we have one, at least one. Okay, good. Two, three. Yeah. Okay. If you'd like a ticket to the ladies' tea party, how many of you guys know what the ladies' tea party is? We've been announcing it several weeks. Three. Yeah, if you'd like a ticket, go ahead and stick up your hand. Yeah. If you, in a table host, if you know that you have a spot available, please go see uh, Sharon, um, Doris, or Barbie if you have some of the space. Um, but it is next Saturday. It's next I was Saturday. like, it is next Saturday. So 
Please get your spots filled. Oh, I see some, some eyeballing over here. So that's good. We're working on it. Uh, next is spring cleaning. Who knows about the spring cleaning for CR? Probably all. Oh, Good. Sheila knows. That's Sheila good. knows. Everyone's like, yeah, spring we, cleaning. We've done this a few times, or is this like this only the second time? I feel like we've done it more than twice. But it's so fun. Uh, they do a garage sale, and all your donations, it goes to Benefit CR. It's super awesome. I actually will donate and then still go shop everybody else's stuff. I'll see mine. I'm like, God bless it. Get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> so if you have anything that you'd like to donate, please give it to Sheila. It's going to be on... Uh, 510, so... That's the drop-off. Yes, the drop-off is 510, so May 10th, so in about two Fridays, you can drop off with Sheila. If you need more information, yep. Sheila's standing up in the back in a beautiful red dress. So. How many of you guys know what what CR does that for? Just everyone, Does anyone know? Only a few. Only a few. Oh, the CR people, obviously. Well, they do this every year uh, so that they can raise money to go to the CR Summit, correct? And all, the, yeah, and all the leaders go out and, and anyone else that wants to join them and they all go out and it's just their time to get trained and equipped and filled up because, you know, we need that. And so this, that's the heart behind this is, is we're not just doing a big yard sale for fun, even though they are fun, um, but that's the whole purpose behind it. So if you have things that you're like, man, that's been sitting in the garage a little too long, go ahead and contact Sheila or Andrew and give that, just be willing to donate to them and so that they can sell it, maybe make a little money. All right, guys? Um, we have one more announcement. Um, this one is, it doesn't seem like something that maybe is as important, but I promise you it is. How many of you guys know that uh, we've expanded our borders and we bought the property next door? Um, and there's, that means there's a lot more landscaping, a lot more brush, a lot more trees. Um, well, it's springtime. We've had to cut down some trees. We've had to cut down some branches that have fallen, everything, and it's all in piles. And they've been sitting there for a few months, and we're starting to see the snakes. <laughs> and we're starting to see the, the critters that live there. And we're like, this is nice and everything. But guess what? Uh, St. Marcus has a free trash and brush pickup every month. Um, and so this May... We're actually, uh, the Saturday that the free brush pickup is, we're going we're gonna to gather as a group and we're going to go and take it to the dump. Um, so if you are available on, this is also on May 11th. Wow, that, that was not planned, but it's all right. May 11th, um, there's two things happening. Come move some brush and then go to the yard sale and check out CR stuff. Um, but we need you there at 9 a.m. If you're available on May 11th at 9 a.m., uh, we, we, we need a lot of help because we have a lot of brush. Um, if you have a trailer or a truck, would you come speak to me or to my father or to Chris and just be like, hey, I have a trailer and I'm willing to, to drive and because it's a little hectic at the dump, so we'll give you a little more instruction, but we, would, we could use the help. Um, yeah. Bring gloves. Bring gloves. If you don't like poison ivy, bring some gloves and snake boots. And, you know, you're nine millimeter if you want to kill the snake. Um, praise God. We're in Texas, everybody. All right, everybody, let, let's close this announcement time and let's welcome up Chris. All right. Hi, good morning. All right. And Glenn said, no, Glenn's talking to his wife. It is, thank you. Appreciate that. All right, so the real reason you came, right? You want to you learn some art history. That's why you're here, right? I, no dad jokes. I'm preaching. This is serious business. So I want, I want to teach you, as principal, I want to teach you something about Vincent Van Gogh, all right? Go, got it. All right, now I'm not leaving. Um, that was a quick joke. Most of you won't get it. Um, Vincent Van Gogh, we all know that he sculpted the Mona Lisa, he painted the Statue of David, he did the windows on the Burj Khalifa, um, very prominent, designed the pyramids, invented the triangle. Um, so other things that I made up about him, um, Vincent Van Gogh had a very famous family. You might not have known this. Vincent Van Gogh, he had a famous aunt and uncle. Um, his, his aunt, though, she was a little dizzy. She was vertigo. Um, and then his uncle was a magician. Uh, where did he go? Um, he was a pretty good magician. 
Um, and then he had a brother who, who grew prunes, which you can't do, it's plums actually, but um, he enjoyed them, gotta go. Um, so he had another bro- brother who worked at a convenience store, owned a chain of them, the stop and go. Um, so that was pretty good. He actually, even though he was from Europe, he had some family on this side of the, uh, of the world. Uh, so there was one from south of the border, Mexico. Um, and then actually a Texan cousin, gringo. Um, so he's a pretty cool guy. And then the one that I actually made up and is not on the list, he had an uncle who worked in shipping and maritime law. Uh, he was embargo. So um, now you've learned about Vincent Van Gogh. All right, now that I've ruined you, let me pray, all right? <laughs> Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for being here this morning. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for breathing on us. Um, Holy Spirit, what matters is what you wanna do this morning. I just hope that my words line up with that. May our hearts be ready to receive, including my own, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, so, um, you know, it's funny, I had a a conversation um, with somebody this morning. They were like, I got to see you in full principal mode, and it was, you know, I think they might have been partially surprised that I can put on the tie and do the stuff, um, and when I preach, if you haven't heard me preach before, I'll, uh, we'll get into some fun stuff. I'm gonna tell you a fun story. I brought pictures um, of something. But often the Lord puts heavy things on my heart. I think it's partly because my mission's over there. So over here, I feel like I get to say a few things that some, sometimes pastors want you to hear but can be a little scary to say. Um, today is not a 101 class. Today is, is an advanced course on absolute surrender. Um, there was a series of sermons by Andrew Murray that were collected into this little book called Absolute Surrender, um, and he tells a story in it. He was a um, preacher. He did all the stuff. He, he died, I think, well over 100 years ago, uh, but they collected them all. You can buy this on Amazon for like $3, well worth every penny. Um, and even back in his time, he was traveling through Scotland, and he asked this, he went to minister in a church and there was one guy who served well, who loved well, he was very impressed by it and was not the pastor. And he said, what do you think you know, is holding Christians back from seeing the more of the Lord right now? And he said that people are not living in absolute surrender to the Lord. And that inspired him to do this. Um, and he starts off, I, I didn't give any verses, but if, if you wanna pull it up, I'm in 1 Kings 20, one through four, or if you brought your Bible. Who brought a paper Bible and is a, a, a scholar? A, you're, you're, yeah, that's right. You're good looking and you're a scholar. Look at you. Um, so this might not sound like the best of stories. So just so you know, um, Ahab at this time, um, where is he? He's in here. So Ahab, king of Israel, um, which, if you don't know, is like one of the worst kings of Israel. Um, he, uh, great choice in women. He married Jezebel. Um, so, um, so he's running things not well. And in 1 Kings 20, 1 through 4, it says, And Ben-Hadad, the king of Syria, gathered all his hosts together, and there were 30 and two kings with him, and horses and chariots, and he sent up and besieged Samaria and warred against it. And he sent his messengers to Ahab, king of Israel, into the city, and said unto them, this, Thus saith Ben-Hadad, Thy silver and thy gold is mine. Thy wives also, thy children, even the good, good ones, are mine. And the king of Israel... Now remember, this is the king of Israel. He answered and said, my Lord, O king, according to thy saying, I am thine and all that I have. I hate to break it to you if you don't know it yet, but God made us for worship to to be in surrender to him. Now the good news is he's not like Ben-Hadad. Now Ben-Hadad, I I looked it up. Ben just means son, son of, but Hadad means, uh, a few different meanings of it. It's actually like the joyous noise, like the clamoring. Um, it can also mean storm. So it can actually mean son of the storm. He's this wicked king storming through, tearing through, and Ahab's like, I have submitted to the wrong guy. I have not given myself up to the Lord. And so now all of a sudden this guy says, I'm taking your money, I'm taking your best stuff, I'm taking like, are you eating cereal? I'm taking your spoon and the box and bowl. And I know, he's a terrible guy. And he, ro- and he rolls, like, listen to this. He says he has 30 and two kings with him and horses and chariots. If you don't know, the, the, the horse and chariots there, that's kind of like, you know, your attack vehicles. A chariot would be equivalent to a tank now. He comes rolling in 
And Ahab's like, okay, according to thy saying, I am thine and all that I have. And, and Tim set me up recently. If you, who was here when Tim talked about, um, if you've ever been the flow of a, a current, a river, or a riptide or something, and you had, like, you had no choice. Your efforts were not going to help you, right? And I think there's really two ways we come into absolute surrender. The one we unfortunately recognize the most is, this is more powerful than me. I am totally terrified and frightened, and I guess whatever it says goes. And that's what Ahab did. Is like, I've seen what you've done to others. My army can't stand up. Oh, well. The other absolute surrender where I really want us to go for is you love and trust someone so much, you will come to that place and say, my, I put my heart into your hands. Right. And my hope is today, by the, by the end of this, um, you know what, Tim always says, I'm doing great on time. There we go. I'm, I'm prophesying and declaring um, <laughs> that I will finish well on time. Aha, speak an opposite word, speak a better word. My hope is that you will come out of this, even if you've been in, in church and in ministry, if you've known the Lord for decades, that we all can grow in our trust in him, that he is that loving, he is that good. Because really, to our natural mind, it seems impossible. I don't know about you, but when you read this and you really just kind of go, like, he did what? It doesn't seem entirely possible up here, right? Like faith, faith is beyond what happens up here, right? Um, but then you see the evidence, you see, you see the happening, all right? So um, I wanna walk us through, and I wrote seven, but I think I managed to combine two, all right? Um, but you guys really enjoyed it last night when I was in here preaching to em empty chairs. So, um, so the first these are gonna be our steps for dealing with absolute surrender. And I'm, I'm just asking the Lord here, I'm, I wanna hit you, hit you with one thing that Andrew Murray said, because I do have time. And there you have the reason why many people pray, pray for the power of the Holy Spirit, which, yeah, he, this was the Holy Spirit radical guy. He goes, says, and they get something, but oh, so little, because they have prayed for power for work, power for blessing, but they have not prayed for power for full de deliverance from self. And when he says self there, he's really talking like a lot about flesh. To fill something, you must first empty it, right? That's the way it works. And what he's talking about here is, is here, I'll read you another line. Deliverance from self-life means to be a vessel overflowing with love to everybody all the day. Everybody all the day. I love the way he puts it in the old, everybody all the day. You can just see him in suspenders and his big mutton chop saying that. So, our five, I'm gonna keep it, try and keep it to five things. Our five things that I wanna share with you about how to be in absolute surrender, what, the, what that looks like, right? Um, I don't wanna just say it of like, give everything up to the Lord, because that's something we do a lot, like we speak it, but I wanna talk about the walking of it out, because let me, let me pull some pressure out of the room right now that the Lord had to, to show up and remind me of, too. Um, it's a lifelong process with him. You are not going to do this perfectly. You are not Jesus. Or as Chris Valentin, Valentin says, you can't make everyone happy. You are not pizza, um, right? Um, <laughs> it's a good one. I love that one. Um, it's true. You're not, okay? You're not. So you're not Jesus. But learning how to walk into that submission, walk into that surrender each day, step by step, it's a process, right? Anybody else in here married and know, like, I hope we're, we're working on this. Okay, nobody else is married. That's crazy. Um, there we go. It's a walkthrough, right? It is a step by step. It's I hope I'm better this, an this anniversary than I was last anniversary, right? Um, also, I just learned something about my wife this morning. I didn't know that that's what she was doing with the tithe. That explains why I was so happy doing our taxes, because I'm just going to speak it, because I'm proud of you. Um, she tripled her business on income over the last year. Um, but now I know why. It's because she started tithing uh, back into it and renewed her fire. So, proud of you. Um, so, I learned that, too. Uh, <laughs> But really, the number one, I, I defined it because not all of us might be married in here, um, but I define it as the terms and conditions. Um, don't, you don't need to raise your hand. We're all guilty of it. You know, your phone gets an update or something like that, and you're like, yeah, I agree. I don't care what this says. Um, <laughs> you've been there. You've been there. Yeah, I agree, whatever. Um, but when it really counts, 
when it really counts, and a great example, of course, is wedding vows, right? Is, hey, you look at this person and say, nobody else, I forsake all others, right? It's you and me. You read through this, God has emotions. He feels joy, he feels sorrow, and he feels jealousy. Whoa. Because he's asking for your whole heart. In fact, he doesn't like, he's like, cold, just be cold and be done with it. Don't be lukewarm. I want you committed to me or not. That's what I'm asking for. I want your heart. And those terms and conditions, of course, you can read more about it here, but thank God he's a forgiving, loving God that his mercy's new every morning because I need it. And I'm, I imagine you do too. Because <laughs> we're not pizza and Jesus, right, Sheila? Right? I mean, what a party. Oh, man. Uh, so we need that. And so uh, one of the places I want to look at real quick, I'm not going to be able to have time to, to go into it all, but you can look up um, in Exodus um, Moses, once again, goes up to the mountain, but while he's gone, the Israelites, by the way, have just had a display, and thank you, Stuarts, for um, letting us be a part of your Passover this week. Um, I was reminded um, that the plagues of Egypt were all insults um, to other gods, insults to Egyptian gods. So the one you probably know is Ra, who is the sun god, and remember one of the plagues was what? Was darkness of your god ain't got nothing on me right? They actually worshiped the Nile, so he's like, I'm going to make it undrinkable. I'll turn it to blood. Um, he was actually, it was like a propaganda thing of against your gods, your made-up gods, your false, your silly little stuff has got nothing on the king of kings and lord of lords. And that's what the Israelites witnessed. And yet, I know we would never do this, um, but a few weeks later, they're like, man, Moses is gone. I don't know. We should burn down our jewelry, and we should make a golden calf and worship it. Um, None of us have ever said, Lord, take me out of this idol and then found another one. Um, but just in case you're human like me, just a reminder. So they, they have the golden calf, and of course they smash it, but I've always found something so weird. Um, and now I'm kind of combining um, terms and conditions with idols, right, of have no other gods. Um, that's in the Ten Commandments. Um, something really weird in that passage of Scripture is that they boil down the golden calf, and Moses turns it to gold dust and he puts it in the people's water and says, drink it. Yeah. And that's what I've always kind of been like, what's going on there? Now, if I was smart, I probably would have like found Scott um, and been like, what's going on here? Or talked to some of our, our biblical scholars, but I did a lot of research into it and there's a, there's a couple schools of thought. Um, one is um, uh, if you've never had horseradish as part of uh, Passover, um, and don't go, I, I'm not sure if I have, because if you have, you know. Um, you know, because your whole head becomes alive. You become aware of parts of your sinuses you didn't know existed. Um, so very medicinal, I'm sure. Um, because the Lord wanted to remind, I want you to know this tastes bad, and it's bad for you. So he sends a physical reminder. So that's one school of thought. But I found out something in Numbers 5, and it starts around verse 11. I'm not going to walk through it all. Um, it's, it's some heavier stuff, but I do recommend the, the homework. And it's about um, unfaithfulness in a marriage. And it says that if, if the wife is accused, one of the things that the Lord says can happen is they go to the priest, and the priest is to take dust from the temple floor and put it in water and say, if you are blessed, you'll be fine. But if there is a curse, something in between, you will feel sick. I believe, after reading that and reading through commentaries and finding people smarter than I, I did more homework on this than I ever have, I believe the Lord was sending that message to it. I would say, hey guys, you hurt me. Why was the calf boiled down and, and put in through the water? Because he's saying absolute surrender means just like that marriage vow, it's you and me. Now, I can feel the heaviness in the room. He loves you and he forgives you. Otherwise, he wouldn't have done this if that didn't matter. But I think sometimes it's not just about like, oh, I don't wanna sin or do wrong. It's also about how much I love that person. That's my wife, by the way. Um, also, hi, Kenny and Tanya. Uh, Thanks, buddy. Love you. Um, and it's how much I love the Lord. And he knows. He knows our inner thoughts, right? 
at the same time, he gets a place in this relationship to be able to say, this wounds me. Whew. Whew. Absolute surrender. Now you're like, man, tell more Van Gogh jokes. Um, But the Lord has a heart, and it should be precious to us, too. I, I know I'm a full-grown man, but I've got a four-year-old son that sometimes when I'd walk in the door and he doesn't hug me, I kind of go, ouch. Right? Elmer, you got kids, you know how it goes. You got grandkids, you know how it goes. Right? I'm jealous for your love. And to have no other idols, no other gods before him. That's also, of course, we are the most distracted generation in history period. You have got screens and billboards and all things vying for your attention. A job, this is a job title now, influencer. I want to influence you to think a certain way, be a certain way, look a certain way. Good night. Oh my goodness. Forgive me for being grumpy old man on the porch, but that bugs me. (laughs) Not that if that's your job or whatever, influence people for Jesus, but what I'm saying in that is that it's drawing people away, and I think the Lord He's pining to just spend time with his kids. And can I say this too? Because you're like, well, you know, like I'm an an ultra marathon runner. I do, you know, or I have these hobbies and everything. Invite him to join you in those. Invite him in that place, right? I don't know how, because one of my bad habits, and maybe we should not be so proud of this, is like, I binged that whole show, right? It's binge watching. But I could try, be like, Holy Spirit, sit next to me. Um, Or Holy Spirit, just kill the TV, um, right? True story, Sean Bowles one time talked about playing Call of Duty and he's, an angel walked in and gave him, him, an, him an assignment to Asia and Tim turned to me and goes, that is not for you. Um, so, do you remember that? <laughs> um, we have always, every day, opportunities to put other things before the Lord. And, and I'm not saying do this out of religious duty, out of, out of um, showing off for others. I'm saying this, doing, doing this in the same way, before I head out for work, I kiss my wife. In the same way, recognize the Lord in your life. Um, somebody that's, that out, I think outruns us all, but let's try and catch him, is St. Patrick. He used to say, I pray every morning for two hours, but if it's a busy day, I pray for three. Come on. Yeah, I wish we would honor him better on his holiday, but that's an issue for another time. (laughs) Um, How do we live in absolute surrender? We understand the terms and conditions and we do our best to honor them. He's not asking for perfection. He already did that through Jesus. All he's asking is that you try and follow that as best you can and each morning wake up determined. Um, What it says, if you visit my office, hopefully good reasons, um, If you visit my office, written behind you most likely on a chalkboard, it says, be good even on a bad day. And that's a reminder of, Lord, you've set me in here to love these kids, and no matter how crummy my night was before last night, no matter how much my throat hurts, which, heaven help me, finish the sermon, um, I'm gonna go and love those kids and tell them about the Lord. Um, One little thing I do kind of love about this time of year is they start getting, they get the sniffles, so they end up in the front office waiting for their parents, so I get to walk out to go get the third cup of coffee and go, are you not feeling well? Can I pray with you? What a joy. Speaking, that's a good bridge into the third one. All right, so terms and conditions, breaking our idols. A third one of how to be in absolute surrender is community. Community. One of my pro- favorite proverbs says, wounds from a friend can be trusted. We live in the day and age right now. It's like, don't judge me, don't tell me what to do. But actually the Bible talks about, you need to have people around you that can push you, pressure you, and iron sharpens iron. And let me tell you, that is not a pretty sight. That is a hard melding. It, can't, it hurts. One of my favorite connection groups ever. We were struggling with something with Teddy and all the ladies just kind of surrounded my wife and they're like, it's time for you to change this. I, I know he'd be okay with me saying it. I know Tom Ray, and he has an amazing story about something going on with his kids and a spiritual father of his came into town and said, it's cute now, but just wait until he gets older. It's time to start nipping this in the bud. It's hard words to receive about your own kids, right? 
Um, now, be careful. Know what level of circle you're in with somebody, okay? Don't just, you're not allowed to lob and criticize what you are. It's to cling to them and say, I got you. Let's do this together, okay? That's the way to do it. That's why we have connection groups. Join one. They're great. Um, so community, of course, that's, that's the church. Um, that's, that's like the walking out outside of the four walls of the church, right? Okay? Um, and I just people that we get to walk close to, um, Oh my God, wow, that just hit me fast. I love the people that we walked with in our, walk with in our connection group and those close to us. Thank you for holding our hands up and praying with us. That's how much you mean to me. You made me cry, stinkers. Um, but an important one in that, of course, is community with the Trinity. It starts out with God saying, let us make man in our image. This is in Genesis 1. We are not alone walking with the Holy Spirit, walking with God the Father, with Jesus. We get to live in that community. Um, And guess what? Like any of that shame that's lying to you about it, he already knows anyway, so you might as well just be like, hey, here I come with my messes. I'm sorry I've made them, okay? Um, And if if you need to hear this, let me hear this. For some reason, they ordained me. Um, I'm the principal, I'm ordained, I have the honor of preaching on stage, but I still all the time have to go, I made a mess, Lord, here I come. Like, it doesn't, you don't get better. Ask her. Um, (laughs) You just push harder. You just go, Lord, you come more undone and you learn from those experiences. You eat that bitter herb and go, I'm not gonna do that again. Um, But one that's really on my heart and, um, you know, it's interesting Timothy kind of brought up, you know, it's a bit rainy. People aren't feeling the best, but um, something I love is church. Anybody else here love church? Uh, come on, love to worship. I do. Um, Tim and I have talked about it before. There are times when we travel places, but we're gone for a little while, and we're like, I miss being in our church. <laughs> like, I miss, you know what I mean? Like, uh, don't get me wrong. I'm going with, you guys met Andres. I get to go worship in his church in a month from now, and it's awesome. But I'll still that night be like, I miss home. Um, so I have a fun one. You guys ready for a visual aid? So um, it's the picture that says Reeser, however you pronounce it. I'm not from the area, or Reeser. Reeser. I'll call it Reeser because it reminds me of peanut butter cups. Um, so we're going to look at a picture of a football stadium. Um, anybody here like football? Um, yeah. Wow. For you guys, I am really... Jeez, but if you know me, I'm not talking about football, really. Um, this is a trick. All right. Um, so in 1953, Reser, uh, Reser Stadium was built for the Oregon State Beavers. Um, I hope they're the Badland because it's Badland Beavers. Um, so um, this is those of you who have known me a while, and if you plan on knowing me a while, I apologize. You've heard this before. You will hear, uh, hear it again. But this is one of my favorite preaching illustrations, and I, wait, I waited, I counted two years to bring this up again. Okay, that's my statute of limitations. Um, but I love this story. In 2016, they wanted to update this stadium. Its capacity is 35,000 people. Um, just to give you a point of reference, Bobcat Stadium over here is 30,000. Um, so you drive by that, it's pretty significant. That's 5,000 more, wow. Um, so um, about five home games per year uh, is average for like, I don't know, the district they're in. There we go. Nailed it. Um, so they have five home games per year. The stadium was built in 1953. So in 2023, they celebrated 70 years. That's 350 games, 30,000 people per game. I I took it down to 30,000 to be a little more realistic for those of you who like the numbers. Um, So 30,000 people per game. That means 10.5 million people have been through that stadium from 1953 to the end of 2023. And that's really going easy on it because there's other events that happen in there and practices. I mean, that's low, but over 10 million people. So let's say 10 million people have come through by 2016, but in 2016, they decide we need to renovate. And right there, you can see it says Oregon State to your right there. See it? Okay. Right there, as 10 million eyes had watched that stadium, had looked particularly at that end zone, 
as everybody kept showing up and showing up and excited for the wins, the losses, what we did, the battling beavers, go, go, go. Under that end zone, 10 feet down, when they started, um, started the renovation, they got 10 feet down, and let's go to the next picture. They found, you can see on the bottom, I'll move, on the very bottom there, um, you can see a backpack, and then underneath, that is a woolly mammoth femur bone, four feet long. And then next to it are bones from woolly mammoths, American camels, um, and then giant, uh, um, oh, there was some other, some giant, uh, giant sloths, yes, and giant sloths. Um, in, in pretty good condition, um, about five, $6,000 a piece. And to quote one of the, one of the uh, thank God they were uh, uh, universities, so they're like, go grab all of our archaeologists, right? <laughs> go grab our geologists, right? Uh, we just happen to have one here. Um, to quote him, we found dozens of pieces, some in good condition, some in spectacular condition. What that means... So let's, let's go easy, 4,000 per piece. What that means, easy estimation, $50,000 was hiding under that end zone and people looked at it for decades and nobody ever went down. I don't know about you, but I don't care if the shovel's available or not. For 50K, I'm gonna dig with my hands. I don't care what game you're playing, excuse me, I'm busy, okay? Um, plus, I wanna find a woolly mammoth bone. Uh, so yeah, you thought we were going here, but we're going there, um, right? All that to say, don't you tell me, I've been in church for 10 years, 20 years, my whole stinking life, that you can't show up to the same room, the same people, the same pastor, the same worship, and God can't do something that you never noticed. Yeah. Right. 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 70 years. He can do something every time. And hey, I'm preaching to myself on this one. The biggest thing that holds back from that is attitude. Uh, we're gonna lose, whatever. You know what? You won big there. Um, you can bring the picture down. It's important. And thank you for showing up. And guess what? I'm just gonna say this, interpret it how you want. But watching on TV, you can't get into the stadium and find the treasure. Um, <laughs> don't make that your regular habit. Uh, if you can email me at tim at hillcountrychurch.net. Um, so... <laughs> Because uh, starting tomorrow morning, I'll be back over there. All right. Uh, but, you know, it reminded me of my, my all time, probably my favorite parable. The kingdom of heaven is a treasure hidden in a field. And I don't care the cost, and I don't care the work I have to put into it. I'm getting that thing. I'm claiming that thing. And guess what? It's really not about like, oh, I mean, and I'll take 50K, don't get me wrong. But it's about the relationship with him. Because everything else, every treasure, even those fossilized bones, they will break and brittle and turn to dust. But your eternal relationship with Jesus Christ will go on forever, and it'll be worth everything. Everything here on this earth. My last sermon that I preached in youth group after 10 years of doing it, all I said, here's three things I'll never regret. Time in prayer, time in worship, and time in the word. What's absolute surrender look like? Giving more of that. And yes, there has to be a sacrifice. We had Leif Hetland come and speak to some pastors in this room recently. It was awesome. And he said, yes, God's giving the fire, but what he's looking for is fireplaces. He wants you to be a fireplace to stir up the stuff he's giving you. I used to say God's looking for people to steward the fire. Leif had a better way to put it, so I'm gonna borrow his. It's just that fireplace holds it. And like, I'm gonna look at this section because when I look at you, I see you burn. And I love it. I'm just gonna get real personal. The college group used to be me. Um, <laughs> like, maybe one or two others, but there were nights. I used to go to that campus and pray and pray. And if I could do like one little thing, if I had a genie and say, God, what's one thing I could do? I would send myself back to say, keep praying because they're coming. All right. All right. And I wanna, yeah, come on. And I want, I want to honor you for burning, but now's the place you're maturing. And if you're in here and need to receive this too, take it. But now you're maturing, so learn how to be a fireplace to stir it. Live the good habit. And I see, you know, it's funny, way in the back there is Tom and Kathy Ray, who have served this house for decades. 
and have burned, and I've got pictures of Kathy walking down the square with a sign that says, I'm a Jesus people. <laughs> Burning just the same way you, same bell-bottom jeans too. Um, <laughs> but how did they get to that place? They learned how to be a fireplace. They gave themselves an absolute surrender. Okay, we're 12.03. Actually, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, you guys good for a few more? Okay. Another way that we... Um, here, I'm, just, I'm gonna combine these two in a, a different way. Um, yeah, here's, here's just one, actually. We pray like Jesus, meaning... Your kingdom come, your will be done. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's kind of going back to the terms and conditions. Is your will not my, mine? And, and here's a good place to, to read this one. It kind of has to do with forgiveness. We're going, if you've never read The, the Bait of Satan by John Bevere, it'll mess you up. Um, it's really good. Um, and... In it, he just talks about like, you have to go where God calls you, and guess what? Um, God will call you to people. I, I don't think God ever calls someone to just go live in a cave their entire life and be an intercessor. Um, he calls you to walk with people, which means mess. And he talks a lot about that, and he tells a very personal story about leaving at a church and feeling good about it, and then at the new church, they just can't plug in, and the Lord's like, I never called you away. It's about walking the path that you're assigned. Um, and hear me on this. I'm, I'm preaching the choir on this one. I've been here since I was 17. I've been here 20 years. Um, I don't think the Lord's called me anywhere else. And hear me on this too. We've planted lots of missionaries and pastors and all kinds of people that their call was else, elsewhere. But sometimes they're like, ah, I'm just, you know, this is hard. I wanna be home. Um, but we know that's what, where the Lord said them. Go where you're called. But in that, when dealing with unforgiveness, following his will, listen to, to what John Bevere says here. Acquiring an offense keeps you from seeing your own character flaws because your blame is deferred to another. I'll read it again. Acquiring an offense keeps you from seeing your own character flaws because your blame is deferred, from to, deferred to another. I spent about 10 minutes in my office with that one one morning. <laughs> Whoops, can't teach my class, hang on. That's not to say that there are situations where you are completely victim. That's not to say your wounds aren't real. That's not to say there aren't times where the pain is so, so severe. You're like, I know God is good, but it's hard for me to just live in that place right now. All that's real. But what it is saying is if God's calling you to absolute surrender, if Jesus could sit on the cross and say, Father, forgive them, they know not what they do, then we can forgive in the same way. We can forgive in the same way. And by doing that, what John Bevere's arguing, I think he's absolutely right, is we can see within ourselves of, here's where I need to improve and grow. And I've gotten to witness that, and it's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. Um, another way to be an absolute surrender is be forgiving. Um, and one person that I think oftentimes we forget to do this with is ourselves. There has to be forgiveness of self. Um, to be able to, I read one the other day, it was like, if you're lonely, just be like a parakeet, eat lunch in front of a mirror. Um, so, but maybe, <laughs> it's a rolling one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's bad. But some of, us might, some of us might need to sit in front of a mirror sometimes and saying, I forgive you for not being perfect. Ooh, hi. I forgive you for not getting this right every day. I grab the Holy Spirit and say, let's do better today. Let's go for it today. Um, I was challenged by Matt Coots. Um, he started praying in tongues 30 minutes a day for a season. Um, like, whoa. I think I had maybe pushed myself to 10 or 15, but I went for it last summer and I regret none of it 
best 30 minutes of my day for 40 days is what I went for. Um, uh, the, the first week is awkward. I'll just go ahead and warn you if you're, if you're praying about going for it. Uh, but after that, whoa, the places you tap into. Um, also, when you're forgiving yourself, this is another one of my favorites, is, is talking about David and Saul. Um, it was pointed out to me recently um, just how profound the Bible is in that um, compare it to like Greek literature, okay? Does, does anybody know who Agamemnon is? Um, I know it's a real popular, okay, a few people. Um, so if you read um, anything about the Odyssey, anything by Homer, um, uh, you know, all the stuff with the Trojan War, um, the Iliad, so he's mentioned in there. And I had a professor define Agamemnon this way. He's like, when you read about him, they're gonna treat him like he's like Michael Jordan and Donald Trump and Bill Gates all in one. They treat him as if he's like this God of gods, right? Um, the Bible talks about our leaders, and David was awesome, but it also talks about the times where he screwed up as a dad, which probably is where I need to hear the most, right? It's like, well, I can't do, I'm not David, right? But then I look and go, okay, I'm not David, um, <laughs> right? <laughs> Didn't, yeah. Uh, my son has not tried to usurp the principalhood. Um, not that he would want to. Um, <laughs> what am I saying in that? Is thank you, Jesus, for making sure in here these people are human. Thank you for Peter. Oh, my goodness. Thank you for Peter. <laughs> it's like, hi, I got an idea. <laughs> Jesus is like, that's a bad idea. I mean... <laughs> And when David and Saul screwed up, which we get to read about, when Saul screwed up, he said, Lord, don't ruin my reputation. And David said, Lord, don't take your presence from me. What's being an absolute surrender look like? It's going, I screwed up, God, but all I want is you. All I want is you. You can take everything else. It doesn't matter. All I want is you. Speaking of forgive, let's bridge that into give and, and really Give in love. Amy Carmichael said, you can give without loving, but you can't love without giving. This woman gave 53 years of her life to the missions field in India, most of while it was sick and rescued over 1,000 children from sex trafficking. She knows something about giving. I read an excellent book, and I don't think he's here today, um, Mr. Lunds, um, but I bet a few hands will go up on this one. Who's ever read Way of the Shepherd because Mr. Lunds or I made you read it? Or, yeah, so there's a few. Um, Way of the Shepherd's a short little book. I highly recommend it. In, in my New Testament leadership class, it's often one of the most popular ones that the kids really enjoy. Um, and it's a true story of a UT professor in the 50s who taught MBA courses, and a guy asked him to mentor him, and he mentors him by not teaching him anything in the classroom, um, anything extra in the classroom, or taking him to meetings or anything. He takes him out and works with his sheep because this professor, Professor Newman, um, was an actual shepherd um, when you could do that in the Austin city limits, um, right? Times have changed. And he teaches them how to inspect your sheep every morning, how to get to know their personalities, um, how to work with them, how to correct them, um, how to protect them. But the last chapter of it is called The Heart of the Shepherd. And the student, who, by the way, went on to um, run General Technologies and become one of Fortune 500's like, best CEOs because um, he learned um, how to shepherd well, he asked Dr. Newman towards the end of their lessons before he gets his MBA and goes on to um, start his first job at General Technologies, where eventually we know the end of the story, he works up to becoming CEO. He says, you know, Dr. Newman, all this works. All this is incredible. Like, I can't thank you enough. Why don't more people do it? So I pose to you this same question reframed. Why don't more people live in absolute surrender to the Lord? Why don't more people strive for this? Why did, why did Andrew Murray sit down with this guy and go, oh my goodness, you're right, there's something too. People are not living in absolute surrender. And Dr. Newman's answer is so simple, because it costs. Because you have to give. Because it means I gave up some Saturdays to work with you instead of sleeping in or 
doing something with my wife. It means that I've had students over to my house. It means the prayer meeting. It means war breaks out somewhere and we've got to go visit them. It means yielding your time. Is it worth it? You better believe it. You better believe it, especially in your relationship with God. But it's, it's giving, and my wife already rocked the, the tithe this morning, but you know, it's, it's, it's more than just tithe. It's, it's offering, it's, uh, when I shared about it last, it was like, I hope you're living in the place where you're dying for somebody to give you a missions letter because you're like, I've got money that I just want to give away. Um, there's a cost, and your, your love comes at a cost. I, I remember you know, growing, oh boy, growing in my first year as youth pastor, and um, after about six months, those passages where Jesus went up to the mountain to pray alone started to make a lot more sense to me. <laughs> it started to make a lot more sense. Because <laughs> one, you need it, and two, it's like, please be quiet for just five seconds. <laughs> and being with kids under like the age of eight knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, <laughs> but you love you love, you love, you love, which means you end up giving and sharing. And yes, let's go back to that fireplace. You constantly put things on the altar and say, God, I'm gonna spend 20 minutes less on this this week. Lord, I mean, it's why we fast a meal, right? It's like something I need, I give up to you because what I really need is you. And I don't, I'm not gonna sit here and try and name all the different idols we can make. We could spend all day with that. What I'm saying is, is look at those things that are taking time from the Lord, maybe where you haven't invited him in, or you just wanna say, I know, like, in the same way, you know, Bethany likes old musicals, so we watched a bit of Seven Brides for Seven Brothers last night. It's goofy as all get out. Um, <laughs> um, but I just sat there and watched and listened and everything because I love her, so I love goofy old movies. And I'm asking even beyond that where you set your stuff aside and not... Yes, invite the Lord into it, but also just go like, no, no, Lord, I wanna set everything aside. I wanna do what you wanna do. Not just invite him into what you're up to, but knock on the door and say, can I do what you're doing, Dad? So you love. Okay, it's 12.15, and I, I think I'm there. Um, thanks, you guys. I appreciate you immensely. Um, being able to share something like this. It sits heavy in my heart, but I want you to just take a deep breath in and, and let it out. I want you to release yourself um, or, or even better, commission yourself to just work and grow on being absolute surrender. But if you're in here today and your trust for the Lord has been shaken, if you know he's good and loving, but it's hard to live in that place, I'm gonna ask you to stand up right now if you're wanting that trust to be renewed, that love to be restored, so that you can be able to, to know and say that God is good um, without fear or hesitation in the back of your mind. I want you to go ahead and stand up. Awesome. Can I maybe get somebody on piano? Thanks, Timothy. Appreciate you. You're racing with Sean. <laughs> He can still come. I'll take both. It doesn't matter to me. I'm just going to release something. Holy Spirit, come and start speaking to hearts and minds in this room right now. Those standing. Jesus. Jesus. This part here, guys, is really not about anything that I pray. It's about just showing the Lord this is where you are and letting him enter into that place. Because I know it can be hard to go Jesus, I give you everything, but then you still might hide a little something under the floorboard. <laughs> but this is you going, I trust you so much, Jesus, that I'm gonna let you see. I'm gonna confess it all. As George McDonald said, there is no heaven with a little hell inside of it. Out Satan must go every hair and feather. Whew. Jesus. Just put your hands out if they're not already, if you're standing, and just start receiving. Let him prove his great love and trust for you. Let him show you that he is trustworthy.
He is trustworthy. And here's the beauty, guys. Everything you've ever dealt with, he's dealt with that and more. In mere Christianity, C.S. Lewis says that truly the one who did not give in to the temptation knows the full extent of temptation, which means Jesus has been tempted beyond what you have because he never surrendered to it. So he knows how far it can go. So you can trust him so that you can know he loves you, that he did it for you. Hopefully you're just in a place of receiving right now. But I, Heavenly Father, I ask you pour out your spirit and hold nothing back to these. Okay, here's altar call number two. Um, if I can get the altar team to go ahead and come up to the front. Uh, the rest of you can stay standing. You can lay down if you're, you're still receiving. If you're in here, and first and most importantly, if you've gone, well, I've never just surrendered to the Lord, period. I've never received Jesus. These people up here to pray that with you. But also if you're in here and you go, if you're thinking, I'm tired of playing games. I've been watching like that football stadium. I've been watching people back and forth and all these things and not realizing there's something more deeper and greater waiting for me. And now it's been exposed. You know who Jesus is, but you haven't. I, I just keep hearing this phrase, but you feel like you've been playing games. You've told God, who, heaven help me. You've told God, you're more my side piece. You've said, I've got something more important than you, and you're up here just for when I die. If that's you today, I also want you to come to the altar. So these folks are up here. I'm gonna end. I guess I'll let Tim do the dismissal. <laughs> but let me just pray one last quick thing. Holy Spirit, help us to live in absolute surrender, to find that place where you're trustworthy and where we grow and push ourselves. And it's an overflow into our daily lives where it shows up in work, at home, in our marriages, over our children, everything, in our finances, to be just like Ahab, but in a good way and say, yep, all my silver and gold belong to you, Lord. All of it belongs to you. Amen. Before we thank Chris, I just want to just share something. This week I was in my office, and one of the things that we try to do when we're going to share and speak is not talk with each other so that, you know, whatever's going on in me doesn't roll over on him. And, he, and, and, and this week I just heard the Lord say, I'm increasing my revelation that I'm trustworthy. Wow. And I said, but... We have to learn to lean in when he says something. And I, and I said, well, what's that mean? You know, because we can do it out of pure, okay, you're trustworthy. But I felt like he said, that's why I've actually been releasing the revelation of worthy. Because when you begin to know I'm worthy, it begins to increase the trust in your life. And I just feel like that... It's more than just the songs we're singing and stuff. There's an impartation that God is doing to say, I'm worthy. You know, in heaven, that's one of the main words they're using. You're worthy. You're worthy of my praise. You're worthy of my surrender. You're worthy of my love. You're worthy. And out of that, what begins to happen is a trust meter begins to grow in our lives. And I felt like as I was just listening to Chris, I just felt like the Lord saying, I'm trying. I, my desire is to increase the revelation of my worthiness so the increase of trust will match. And so if just as you're just standing and sitting, I just encourage you right now that the Lord is saying in the atmosphere, it's, there's a revelation to take hold of that just you're worthy. You're worthy. All of eternity, all of creation is declaring he's worthy. And so we just thank you for the revelation today, God. We thank you 
for the release of the call for full surrender, which has been going out since the garden. And so we just thank you for your word today, God. We thank you for your presence in here. We thank you that there's something in our hearts that says, got to get, got to get to my family, got to get to community. And so we just welcome everyone here into the sense of community and family, and we break the lie that you're alone. So we just want to honor you. I just want to, can everyone just stand? I feel like Chris is just supposed to bless our week, actually. Um, I know he wants us to have breakthrough high moments. If you don't believe that, then you don't know he's worthy. (laughs) And I just felt like God just wants to bless our week where we literally have moments where the Holy Spirit helps us in absolute surrender. We're going to end with this. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny, while Tim was talking, I was like, oh no, there's one thing, one more thing the Lord wanted me to say, but I might not get to say it. But we had Coach Bailiff come speak in chapel. He was a Texas State coach and went on to Rice. And he said, um, you know you've do, done a good job of shepherding them. He coached fo- college football. You know you've done a good job of coaching them if they invite you to their wedding. And he's like, I'm blessed to get to go to a lot of weddings. And I I think what the Lord is saying to us this morning in that is if we'll surrender to the Lord and have our hearts vulnerable, you will be in intimate places with the Lord and people that are absolutely stunning, that will be beautiful, that will be freedom, that will be life-giving. So I wanna pray this over you. Lord, we know that is our, it's more than just a destination, it's all along the journey. I just ask that even this week, we get to new levels of intimacy intimacy with you, Jesus, and walking in those in our family, in our close friend group, that spiritual family we have, Lord, that we go to beautiful, wonderful places with you, that there is favor upon our lives because we're sold out and there's nothing missing. There's no lack. There's no peace in worry or anxiety but all of it is brought under you because we've submitted it all under you. We hold nothing back from the altar. Burn it all, Lord. I surrender all, Lord. Be blessed in that in Jesus' name. If you need the altar at the front, otherwise we're dismissed. Have a blessed and wonderful week.